Hey guys, welcome back to another Bitcoin video. This is a very important video. In 16 hours, we will be seeing the weekly candle close. On the total cryptocurrency market cap chart, which is a chart that measures the entire valuation of, of cryptocurrency in US dollars, we are seeing a retest of a major support level stemming from 2017. We rejected off that level in 2017, and we did not get back above it until 2021. That gives you an idea of how major that level is. In 16 hours, we will be closing a candle, and at this point, if we were to close it at this current level, we would be closing it below that support level, which would lead to a free fall in the financial in the uh, cryptocurrency market. Bitcoin, at the same time as this is happening, is hovering just below a support level. It broke down from a bear flag, and if this weekly candle close closes below the critical level on the total cryptocurrency market cap chart, we can expect Bitcoin to free fall down to those 15.4k levels. The next 16 hours are extremely important. On top of this, we have the Q4 uh, returns for Bitcoin come in, and we've seen the first four quarterly negative results consecutively uh, come in for Bitcoin. So we've had four quarters of negative growth on Bitcoin for the first time in the entire price history of Bitcoin. I'm going to be getting into why that's not very important uh, and the reasons might surprise you there. On top of all of this, the yearly candle is closed and we need to get into that as well. We've seen a bearish engulfing yearly candle close. So lots to cover, guys. Before we get into any of it, check out the uh, pinned comment, check out the description. We've got a VIP sale, 30% off VIP orders until the 14th of January. Uh, we've got, what else, Crypto Academy. If you want to learn how to trade, you can check out the website there and trade in a university type format and learn how to trade, learn how to analyze markets, etc. And on top of all of that, we've got the BitGet Exchange, which we use to trade on the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel. You can sign up for that using my referral link. All right, let's get into the video, guys. Cheers. All right, so let's start out with the quarterly returns chart on Bitcoin. As you can see, we've never seen four quarters of negative growth on Bitcoin before on the quarterly returns chart. We've just seen that in 2022. Now, this is obviously bearish. It's not a, a good, well, it's, it's, not, it's not the fact that it's bearish. It's indicative of what's happened, which was bearish. So it's an observation of the past, which was bearish, of course. But what I would say is this. Uh, a lot of people seem to be getting very worked up about this. I don't think it's that big of a deal. The main reason I don't think it's big of a deal is because we only saw a 1% negative quarter in Q1 and a 2% negative quarter in Q3. So like the fact of the matter is, yeah, they were all red quarters, but 1% and 2%, they're not that red, guys. They're really not that red. And if you look at 2018, we almost did the same thing. So this time isn't really particularly different. 2018, we had negative 49%, negative 7%, negative 42%. And the one green quarter we had was only a 3% quarter. You know, anything could have brought Bitcoin down in 2018, 3%, and we could have had four quarters there. So I wouldn't say that having four quarters of negative growth here is particularly bad. Uh, people are acting like it's the end of the world. I don't think it is. You know, and, and all you need to really understand to see that it's really not the end of the world is just go through Bitcoin's price history. Go through the previous bear markets and, and, and see what Bitcoin is actually doing. Don't just look at these arbitrary charts about quarters. Time isn't even a real concept in the markets, really. I mean, obviously it is, but the point is it, it's, it's kind of made up, right? The point is, look at what's happened previously. Bitcoin went down 86% in 2015. Bitcoin went down uh, 84% in 2018. Currently, it's down 77%. To act like us going down 77%, which is a less of a drop than previous cycles in the same time frame, is worse somehow just because of a quarterly chart saying we've gone down four quarters in a row. Completely ridiculous. Okay, so it's obviously not the end of the world. Uh, that that thing I would I would dismiss that chart very very easily, and that's why I wanted to talk about it first and foremost. Get that off the table. If you're listening to YouTubers talk about that, don't give them any attention. It's it's completely ridiculous. Going down one percent and two percent. It's not worth noting, right? So I, I would completely throw this chart out the window. It's not worth noting. Now, in bigger, more important news, and this is something I really wanted to look at, uh, and this happened yesterday, actually, we've broken down from the bear flag formation. That's big news. Bitcoin has broken down from this bear flag formation. As you can see, the bear flag, I'll make it pink so you can see it. Bear flags occur in downwards trends. Essentially, what happens is you have a downwards trend and then you have a sharp ascending channel formation. It acts as kind of a break. So the charts kind of go down a lot and then people want to break, you know, the, the bulls start testing their confidence there, see if that level's worth defending or not. And you go up a little bit and then you end up seeing another leg downwards. That's a typical bear flag formation. That breakdown has occurred. And, and based on typical charting structures and typical charting patterns, 
patterns. You can technically expect Bitcoin to go downwards further from here and potentially even retest the lows at 15.4K based on that breakdown. That would not be out of the ordinary whatsoever. Uh, and on top of this, as we've seen that bear flag breakdown, unfortunately, Bitcoin has also seen a breakdown from this pink line here on the on the total cryptocurrency market cap chart. This pink line is stemming backwards here from 2017, 2018. It was the major resistance zone that we hit our head on in 2017 before going downwards further and not reaching those levels again until 2021. Uh, you can see we're holding that on the weekly candle quite well, uh, on the weekly chart quite well. We've actually been holding it since June. We had our first retest in June was six months ago, even more than that now, seven months ago. Uh, and, and we held it up for, you know, seven months. And now, you know, even in the recent months in November, we held it for support for a long period of time. But now, unfortunately, in 16 hours, we haven't actually closed below it yet. Okay, we haven't closed below it yet. I shouldn't have said that in the introduction. I will edit that out uh, and I will put a caption there. We haven't closed below it yet. However, we are seeing risky territory here. 16 hours uh, is, is not a long period of time. Okay, so we have to, you know, realistically, Bitcoin really has to get back above, uh, you know, not Bitcoin, but the total cryptocurrency market cap really has to get back above this level at se uh, 762 billion. Uh, as of right now, if we close that weekly candle below that line that's been holding us up since June, we could be in serious trouble here for Bitcoin uh, and, and the market itself. And Bitcoin could materialize this drop, which so far has been pretty small and pathetic, into an actual structured retest of a lower level at 15.4K. Currently, Bitcoin is hovering. It's hovering because we're waiting to see what happens, in my opinion, in my speculation. We're waiting to see what happens with this total cryptocurrency market cap chart in 16 hours. If that closes below 762 billion, Bitcoin will see uh, a retest of that 15.4K level. Level. That is my best guess. However, if we do manage to get above it, back above six, uh, six, seven, sorry, 762 billion, uh, Bitcoin will most likely get back above the bear flag and label this drop as a fake out and potentially come up and retest these yellow lines and the red line there. So really, really big stuff happening there for Bitcoin uh, and, and the total cryptocurrency market cap chart in the next 16 hours. Uh, and that's something that we really need to be watching out for. You know, it doesn't just end, the importance doesn't just end there. You know, we're seeing Ethereum doing the exact same thing, testing a very critical level there, kind of hovering, as you can see, right on top of support. Now, Bitcoin has lost its support, but Ethereum's still holding onto it. And this is indicative of the fact that the market is not in a free fall yet. It's waiting to see what's going to happen with that total cryptocurrency market cap chart, waiting to see it get back, waiting to see if we can get back above that pink line on the weekly candle close, which will be very, very, very important. Uh, now, we're very familiar at this point. We've spoken about it a lot of times with the upside levels that are important. This downtrending yellow line, the bull market support band, the red box at around 18.2K. They're all critical levels. If we get back above those levels, we're looking good. Uh, if we get down below 15.4K, we're looking bad. We know what the time frame is at this point. We've spoken about it many, many, many times. The time frame is quite simple. The time frame is the four-year cycle theory. Uh, we're expecting a bottom on Bitcoin to occur in Q4 2022 or January, which is this month. Later than that, so the next 30 days, later than that, and we're heading into territory in which we're starting to invalidate the four-year cycles date range trend, which will be very, very skeptical and very, very iffy. Not a good situation to be in there. So at this point in time, we can technically come down and create a new low, and it technically would be healthy as per the four-year cycle theory, so long as the low is not below 11.5K, in which case we would have dropped below previous bear markets, uh, and that would be a break of diminishing returns. Because when you see diminishing returns, you want to see it to be upside and to the downside. So overall macro right now, overall what we need to be looking at uh, is, is really uh, the total cryptocurrency market cap chart in the next 16 hours. That's really the most important thing. Uh, I will briefly mention, just because we've seen the yearly candle close, uh, that the yearly candle has formed a bearish engulfing candle. We spoke about this two days ago. I don't think that's a big deal. The reason I don't think it's a big deal is because we've seen bearish charting, charting formations on the yearly chart before. We saw a resistance zone be formed here and we rejected off of it twice and we broke up against it like it was nothing, right? Bearish charting candlestick formations on the yearly chart are completely irrelevant in my opinion. You know, the fact of the matter is this, right? You know, the yearly chart is so diluted. It is such a diluted form uh, of, of price analysis. One candle represents an entire year. If you think you can make predictions based on one candle representing an entire year, you, my friend, are completely mistaken and do not understand the fundamental principles of technical analysis. As per this yearly chart trend, which is based on the four-year cycle theory, we should be seeing a green year in 2023. We have one, two, three, four. One, three, and four have always been green. Two has always been red. We've seen two become red, and now we're expecting a green year in 2023. All right, so that's if the four-year cycle remains, which we'll know by the end of January uh, if Bitcoin goes up or has created new lows. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, main things to watch, again, I'll just say it one more time, is this total cryptocurrency market cap chart. That's really the most important thing in the next 16 hours. Thanks for watching. Cheers. I want to briefly interrupt this video to talk about the BitGet exchange. 
The BitGet exchange has five times lower fees than Binance, which is the biggest major exchange in the cryptocurrency market on futures. It also has zero feeds on every single spot pair, so you can trade spot for entirely free, no fees included. It runs events. Right now, it's got a FIFA World Cup event sponsored by Messi, the football player. It's got copy trading, strategy trading. It's got exclusive rewards and discounts in the reward center. It's got everything you need for a trader using exchange. This is the exchange I personally use as a trader for my everyday trading, and I highly recommend it everyone does so at the Wolves of Crypto YouTube channel. Sign up using my referral link for exclusive rewards and discounts. That really helps out the channel and I appreciate it. For my fans from the United States of America, you can sign up using this exchange uh, with a VPN uh, and use the exchange with a VPN and just sign up using my referral link like normal and you'll be treated like a normal customer because this is also a non-KYC exchange. So make sure to sign up using my referral link in the pinned comment or the description below. And without further ado, let's get back into the video.